Good morning, good afternoon and good day everybody. David here and in today's video I'm going to share with you my most like fun and ridiculous way to play Behemoth I've like, come across. This has been so much fun lately. I want to just stress that off the bat. This is awesome. Um, this build is inspired by the likes of uh, Kami Cakes and Cool Cheese. If you don't know those guys, please check them out. Incredible players and great content creators. And this is something they've been rocking a lot lately. So I thought I'd try it out. This is my take on it. Both of those play PC and mouse and keyboard as well. So this is coming from a more of a controller console perspective. So the reason I absolutely love this build is just how aggressive it lets you be. You can just hold forward and just absolutely tear through people and teams of people and it's just so much fun to use. Now the basics of the build and the way you want to use it is you use your glacial grenades as a means of creating either cover for yourself to help close a gap or just to provide cover for you to peek shoot and stuff. You also gain a defense buff through the resist perk in your fragments and it also allows you to when you destroy those crystals to gain either an overshield or if you're already weak as a means to instantly start your health recovery. This is absolutely fantastic for being able to get out of a sticky situation and also just immediately get your health back so you can re-engage the fight straight away. Now I absolutely love rocking this with a SMG and I know Cool Cheese also um, rocks this constantly with an SMG but I've also used the Chroma Rush grid skipper even hand cannons and have had just as much success and just as much fun using those other weapons as well i also absolutely love pairing a fusion rifle with this but also shotguns and snipers work with this as well so it doesn't limit your playstyle or the things you actually want to use so now i will break down the build in more detail we'll look at the aspects and fragments I'm using as well as the mods and different perks and stuff on the weapons you want to look out for so this is my Titan obviously rocking behemoth and this is built around the SMG mainly so the SMG of my choice is the extraordinary rendition I absolutely love this SMG. Uh, you may notice in my previous videos I rate the surplus roll I have highly, which is still awesome. But this particular roll is a max range roll. So we have arrowhead break or hammer forged. I rock with arrowhead because that puts it up to perfectly 100 recoil and that extra bit of range that we have from hammer forged isn't really noticeable. I much prefer being able to control my shots at that range rather than having the extra range if that makes sense. Uh, Accurized with a range masterwork so that's just boosted the range a ridiculous amount. Zen moment to help with the stability. I do rate surplus higher than zen moment but I'll tell you why I like this perk over that for this particular build in just a sec. Multi kill clip, so again, just a damage perk to be able to chain kills back to back is awesome. And I opt with Icarus because I'm a hunter main, I, uh, I can't help but jump up in the air all this time, <laughs> so <laughs> Icarus is always a must for me. So, the reason I prefer Zen Moment over Surplus for this particular build is because we're going to be using our abilities non stop, we're going to be using them as like cover and ways to get our health back and to create overshield and stuff so surplus is hardly active on our other role so zen moment helps with that stability and helps land those shots at range as well as our head break in my opinion surplus is better but for this particular build zen moment is the more obvious and stronger choice so we're pairing this with the plug one i got this to drop yesterday on the last day and this is an incredible roll. Those 150 kills were from just the day that I got it to drop, so absolutely loved this. We've got Fluted Barrel, which is great because that increases the stability, which is the most important stat for a fusion. Particle Repeater, again increasing stability. A Range Masterwork, which is good, second best option. 
I would have preferred stability again, but range is still welcomed. Feeding Frenzy, that's cool. This is the only perk where it could have been better. Under pressure or heating up would have been the best two options here. And Cornered is awesome, absolutely love this perk. Faster charge time or draw time when you're surrounded by combatants. So surrounded by combatants in the Crucible means if two or more people are within a 15 meter range, I believe it is. If they're within that range, even through walls and stuff, this will activate and gives you the charge time of a rapid fire frame without dropping the impact, which is what a charge time masterwork does. So this perk is incredible. Activates when you need it and there's no drawbacks to it. So some other options as well that you'll see in this video and that I loved. Multimac, fantastic SMG. Kill clip is incredible. Threat detect is awesome for an SMG. And this roll could get a little more range which would help it more. But I do love this as well. I just found the um, aggressive frames are just my personal choice. I just love them. But they do have the same time to kill so there's no real difference between them, it's just whatever you prefer. We also paired this with the Chroma Rush. This is my god roll. I absolutely love this thing. I changed my setup slightly with my armor when I'm using this, so I'll talk about that in just a sec. But again, heating up and kill clip are just absolutely fantastic perks that work really, really well together. And this has just got incredible range as well. So if you are struggling to close the gap and stuff, this is another fantastic option for you to try. If fusions aren't your thing, I absolutely loved using slug shotguns with this build. So this first and last out with opening shot was incredible. Another fantastic one I tried was the Sojourner's Tail. Again with opening shot, tunnel vision made this just absolutely stick to people. This was another fantastic choice. And then um, I was also pairing this every now and then with my grid skipper so I had short range here and then a pulse rifle for longer range here and then again we rock it with the deathbringer because we're not rocking an exotic and this is just my favorite heavy weapon so now into the depths of the build we're rocking the tower barricade with catapult lift Catapult lift is great for um, giving you that boost when you want to close the gap. It takes a little getting used to. I never rocked this before this build, but um, after two play sessions, I can't use anything else now. This is incredible for um, just giving you that momentum to just charge straight towards people. Obviously, the Shiver Strike melee is still fantastic. It doesn't absolutely yeet you like it used to. But um, this can still be used in a multitude of ways to either close the gap or to get out of sticky situations. This is just awesome. We're using the Glacial Grenade for this. Glacial Grenade, in my opinion, was and always will be the best stasis grenade. Just because of how much utility it has. You can create cover with it. You can throw it at your feet to launch yourself up in the air. And with combination with the melee, you can use that to close the gap and stuff. You can also this particular build use it to heal yourself when you're getting pushed you can create platforms with it to peak different angles and stuff if you're using a longer range weapon but this is just awesome and then of course it can still freeze people as well we're using the howl of the storm so again we use this as a way of creating more cover for ourselves so we kind of use this as a second glacial grenade but again, this can be used to freeze people and stuff as well still. And then we use the Tectonic Harvest. This is important for the way the whole build sort of works and the synergy of everything. So this makes it so um, we create stasis crystals whenever we smash stasis. And those crystals give us our um, melee and abilities back. So the fragments you want to use with this. Whisperer Hedrons can be swapped out. This is one that's optional. Of course it doesn't give you the damage buff that it used to but the buffs it still gives you are massive and just awesome so this increases your weapon stability aim assist mobility resilience and recovery after freezing someone we're not really using our stasis to freeze people but whenever we do freeze someone those buffs are welcomed they're a massive increase to everything and especially on an smg you really do feel it 
Now these three I believe are a must and sort of make the build work in the way it's supposed to. So Whisper of Shards, Shattering Stasis Crystal temporarily boosts your grenade recharge rate because we want to get our grenade up as much as possible because we're going to be using that in a multitude of ways. Whilst we're near frozen people or a just a crystal we take reduced damage so again this is essential to the way we're going to be rocking this build. And then Whisper of Rhyme, collecting stasis shards grants a small amount of overshield. What this doesn't say is this actually starts your um, healing as well. So even though we are rocking reasonably high recovery, by throwing the stasis crystal in front of you, not only are you blocking their line of sight and creating cover, you smash that crystal, you'll be getting your health back instantly. Then you get the overshield when your health is already full. So this is an incredible fragment. And again, essential part of the build and the way you're going to be playing this. Now to quickly run through the armor and the mods and stuff, we're using the Peacekeepers. These are incredible for SMGs. Reloads your stowed SMG, allows you to ready them instantly, so that's like quick draw. Improves your handling, so it's like old quick draw, where you get the handling buff, not just the quick swap. And also, it boosts your movement, so this is like having Dragon Shadow up constantly, or having something like Stompies or something. Like, you definitely feel the difference in your mobility, to the point where at first it actually threw me off. Um, I had to spend a few games getting used to it, but now um, I can't take them off. Like, I absolutely love these. If you're rocking an SMG build, use Peacekeepers, they are incredible. When um, I was using the Chroma Rush, I would swap that out for the Heart of Inmost Light. So this meant that whenever we use an ability, so our Grenade, Melee or Barricade, it empowers the other two, making them stronger or do more damage but the main point of using this was that it actually makes your um, abilities come back faster so whenever we throw our grenade and we use our barricade to smash that grenade we get the empower buff so we get our grenade back faster there but that is on top of the um, whisper of shards you get your abilities back much faster using the out of in most light than you do when you're not using it. So quickly to run through everything else, obviously things like SMG targeting, reloading, unflinching, all that stuff. But the main sort of mods I want to draw your attention to is Swift Charge. So this can only be active on a arc piece, so we've got it on our arc helmet. This states that you become charged with light by getting rapid kills with SMGs. But because of the aggressive nature that SMGs have and because of being able to use multi-kill clip and stuff to get double kills easily, you proc this all the time. So this is like an awesome mod to have for this build. When we were using the Chroma Rush and not using a SMG, you can swap this out for quick charge. You become charged with light by getting rapid kills with fusion rifles or shotguns instead. We obviously pair that with high energy fire. So this is what gives us our damage buff on our SMG. And I want to draw your attention to Recuperation, which replenishes health each time you pick up an orb of power. So this is only on a solar piece. And this pairs awesomely with Taking Charge. Taking Charge, we become charged with light by picking up orbs as well. So then we get a multi-kill with our SMG, which is Masterworked, which creates an orb. We become charged with light with one stack because of Swift Charge mod. We then pick up the orb that we made from the multi-kill, which gives us taken charge, that gives us a second stack of charge with light, and it also heals us so we can just keep pushing up, keep being aggressive, keep chaining multi-kills easily because we've got so many damage buffs, and all that stacks with multi-kill clip as well. Like, this is just so good and so awesome. And finally, before I forget, Bomber is great, so reduces your grenade cooldown even further when using your class ability. So again, that stacks with everything else we have going on. So again, you can use anything as your primary weapon, but I absolutely love SMGs for this build. The reasons are pretty simple. The aggressive and lightweight frames both have a 0.6 TTK. So that, at base, is already faster than most of the primaries you come across in the Crucible that sit around a 0.8. Whenever you get a 
damage buff on top of that, it just makes it so the SMGs are just ridiculous, they just absolutely melt through people. And that again just reinforces that ability to just stay aggressive, keep pushing forward and keep getting multi-kills. It's just so much fun to do. SMGs are quite generous now because of the stability buffs that they got a few seasons back. On console, they're so easy to control now that you can just spec everything into range and lethality and not have to worry too much about the stability stat, which is awesome. It's just made it so these weapons are not only viable, but like I said, just super lethal. The reason I absolutely love pairing the peacekeepers with this is because they just turn everything up to 11. So you get a faster strafe speed to the point where when I initially put them on, it actually threw my shots off. The strafe speed boost that you get from peacekeepers is significant so it took me a couple of games to actually get used to it. It also gives you quick draw but the old quick draw so you get the handling boost as well which is absolutely fantastic. It's like having the Dragon Shadow buff up constantly whenever you have your SMG out. For most of this gameplay and for most of my play sessions I just had the SMG out constantly. I didn't need to change to any other weapon. <laughs> So I highly recommend using the Peacekeepers if you are using an SMG. Now when using your abilities, as you can see here, they still freeze people. So you still have that sort of benefit that Stasis gave you before it got nerfed. But it's not sort of the reason to use it. So even though it can do it, I was actually using my abilities much more for creating cover. It's a means to get my health back just forcing my enemies to push certain angles so forcing them to play the game my way rather than theirs if that makes sense. Here is a perfect example. Tornado is coming so I rock my wall and smash my grenade and because of me getting my health back and the resist buff I actually survived that tornado and then I also have the resist buff active for when I started the engagement afterwards as well. And this happened so many times, again, you'll see in this clip here, I throw down a Howl of the Storm, and because of the resist buff it gave me, I actually survived the shotgun blast from the guy that flanked me from behind. So here, as I push in, I see that guy drop his Nova Bomb, and as I see the orbs are coming towards me, I throw my Glacial Nade, so they tank the Nova Bomb and keep me alive, and then I'm able to get the cleanup. Again, this happens so often and it's just so, so good. This resist buff and just the means to get your health back instantly is just incredible. I can't stress enough just how good it is. The barrier is also incredible for shattering your crystals and creating more cover as well. So you can throw your glacial nade down, shatter it with the barrier, therefore getting your overshield, leaving a stasis crystal up next to you so you've got the resist buff and then you can see through your barrier as to where the enemies are and how you can push up. You can then use the Howl of the Storm melee to um, create even more cover and close the gap if you need to further. So all of your abilities just go hand in hand and feed each other. The melee attack, as well as using it for Howl of the Storm and creating cover and crystals and so forth, it's still a fantastic movement option. So you'll see time and time again, I use it to get out of trouble or use it to close the gap if I need to um, just get a double melee on someone. So it's still a very, very good option. This is a perfect example of using my melee to dodge the air and till that this guy's got. Or he's into the wall, dodge the fusion blast and I'm able to clean up with the SMG. It's just so good. Now when using the Behemoth Super, I'm not gonna lie to you, it's far weaker than it was before the nerf. So now, you don't have the movement speed you used to have. You don't have the damage resistance that you used to have. And also the melee doesn't lunge as far. So with all these things, it's very hard to run out into the open and get like a team wipe like you used to be able to. But now this super benefits a lot more and should be used a lot more in close quarters. Uh, as an example, you can see here, I hear the Dawnblade pop pop my super and freeze him whilst he's in that tight area and then instantly get the kill. The second Dawn Blade pops and I basically just keep laying ice everywhere and keep using my melee to just dodge him and I'm able to take out both Dawn Blades in this tight space. 
So you always want to lure them into a tighter area, making it easier to freeze them first because that's pretty much the only way you can consistently get kills with the super. One benefit the super does have is that it has a really long duration. There'll be times where I use it like in trials or something to basically keep them at bay because they won't push you whilst you're in your super. Keep throwing up ice everywhere as cover and getting the resist buff and then you can get easy revives then so if your teammates are down the duration is long enough for you to get both your teammates up and still have some super left to do a possible push as well. Now I want to talk about the secondary options uh, starting with the fusion rifle. So I've been using both the plug one and the null composure. You can see there's several times where I'm able to uh, get a few people weak and don't have time to get a reload with the SMG so the fusion allows you to just get those cleanups within mid range so I don't have to worry about trying to close the gap more or moving too far away from my stasis crystals that are giving me that defense buff. This was a really fun play that one has to do with the fusion. So as you can see I've got kills there. Use the stasis grenade to block off that doorway, stop them from pushing me. Now I push up here for a flank, get too weak, and then as they push that corner I actually get a collapse with the plug one. <laughs> so that was epic, a lot of fun. So again, the thing I love about the fusion is just the range it gives you so you don't have to overextend if all your crystals are set up and you've got all your buffs and stuff. You're not forced to close the gap more like you are with like a shotgun or something. The fusions also allow for peak shooting, so you can charge up whilst behind your um, crystal, peek out and just let the charge off instantly. So there's a couple of uh, just benefits the fusion gives you. Now for those that don't really like SMGs or if you just don't have a good one, if you can't grind for like, the extraordinary rendition or if you've missed Iron Banner and don't have a good multi mac a very good option is the Chroma Rush, which you can easily grind for this season with the Override event. Now, I've done a whole video on this Chroma Rush, so I'll link that above if you want to check it out in more depth. But this Chroma Rush has Kill Clip and Heating Up. So again, there's just several buffs there that just help with your lethality and consistency with the weapon. Where this benefits you more is that you don't have to close the gap as much because the auto rifle has more range so you can hold back a little more and play your mid range a lot more and therefore it's even harder for them to shut you down because you've constantly got cover, constantly got a resist buff, you're applying constant pressure with a high rate of fire weapon so making them flinch loads. So if they want to try and snipe you or close the gap to shotgun you, you're making their job like so difficult. And again with this particular perk combination, after each kill you're getting the massive stability and recoil direction buff because of heating up and then after a reload you're getting that damage buff from um, kill clip as well. Then you can constantly use your abilities to just heal yourself and to keep going in the engagement. It's just so much fun. Another secondary option I really enjoyed using with this was slug shotguns. All this footage was taken before the shotgun nerf so I think the slug shotguns are an even better option now. So again a lot of people pair duality with this and duality is probably the best bet and just because it has so much range and has the ability to be both a slug shotgun and a normal shotgun you fire it from the hip. I like using my uh, legendary options so I have a good bone structure with opening shot which is really good. The reason I love slugs is not only do they give you more range than a normal shotgun but if you miss the head and get the body shot with the behemoth you can close the gap with your um, melee attack get the easy cleanup or if you are rocking peacekeepers it's very easy to have a super fast swap to your SMG for an easy cleanup then procking multi kill clip and then you can go on a spree from there I also love having warp weapon on a slug shotgun all in all, this build and this playstyle is just so much fun, so I highly recommend trying it out. Trying different weapons out and just seeing what gravitates to you. And now I'll just let this gameplay run in the background. This is a Wii RAM and the undefeated I got using this setup. It's a lot of fun. You've enjoyed the video, you feel like you've learned something, a like is very much appreciated. I have loads of videos on my channel that deep dive into different 
builds and different playstyles and stuff, and even just full on weapon breakdown. So feel free to subscribe to check out those other videos, and I can guarantee you will learn something from it. If you have enjoyed the gameplay and want to get to know me and my community more, I do stream over on Facebook every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. So hopefully, I'll catch you guys there. But until next time, take care, stay safe, and I shall catch you all in a bit. Bye to bye. Don't see captured. That's a power play. You took them. Now hold them. Zone A lost. A fire team that fights together stays together. The Iron Lord in front. The Twilight Gap where Lord Shax earned his name. None. Fell more guardians than you. Two for one. Zone A captured. You have advanced. I've seen enough. I'm calling this one. Not ask for a better victory. You're a wall around those zones. Take that iron will beyond the crucible.